Hey everybody, Charles Wooden, CEO of Geekdom here today to bring to you our first incubator demo day. Really excited today. You're going to hear from three teams that have been doing some really impactful work over the past 12 months to build out their ideas and make them into viable businesses that you're going to hear about today. Back in 2018, uh, Geekdom had founded a partnership with the city of San Antonio called SIPTEC SA. And as a part of that partnership, there were some great ideas that came from it. One that came from a university and two that came from our partner over at CodeUp. These, these teams had some really great ideas, but really the point was they didn't know where to take that idea after that. They weren't ready to start you know, uh, receiving revenue. They weren't ready to start working with the city. And so Geekdom was able to step in in partnership with the city of San Antonio and to create a 12 month program to really help these teams solidify some of their business ideas and make them ready to be able to make a real company out of it and to start receiving revenue and potentially even work with the city of San Antonio directly. Hi, I'm Leslie Chaznoff. I'm the Geekdom Programs Manager. I get to manage a handful of different programs here at Geekdom, including our Incubator Program Pre-Accelerator, our Community Fund, and SIPTEC SA. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about our Incubator Program, as our first cohort has just finished their year from 2020, and they're here to pitch you their ideas, tell you about their journey, and we're here to cheer them on, because we're so proud of all the work that they've accomplished. So the Geekdom Incubator is a 12 month long program that helps teams take an idea and to create a business that is ready for launch. The way that they do that is through a bunch of different programming to include one-on-one -on -one mentorship, business modeling, marketing uh, understanding, all sorts of different things, lean business canvases to be able to prepare them for a business that is ready to launch out into the market and to start receive customers. This first cohort of, of companies or teams that you're gonna see today are focused on civic technology, but this program is built to be able to help out any company or any idea become a viable business uh, that is ready for launch. Our first team you're gonna hear from today is Potify. Potify is working to solve the problem of matching pet adopters to pets that are in our shelters in San Antonio. And they're doing this through unique technology that helps pet adopters identify the animals that would most fit their personalities, their lifestyles, and also help them match pet adopters that might be able to take care of special needs pets. And this in turn helps the shelters match those animals to the pet adopters faster, hopefully at a higher successful rate, so that animals aren't returned to shelters and they're adopted out more quickly. So we're really excited about this opportunity to work with the Potify team to connect them to animal care services at the city and see the great work they've done on their product and business this year. Take it away, Potify. I am Emma Dijon. I am one of the co-founders of Potify. So Potify right now is a pet adoption application for local shelters right now in San Antonio and pet adopters or potential pet adopters in the city as well. So the company actually began in Coda. Laura and I were partners for our final capstone project when we went through their web development program. We had heard a lunch and learn from one of the members of Geekdom, Joyce Dooley. She came to talk about the Civ Tech program that was at Geekdom at the time and the different um, civic challenges that the city had put forth for local companies in the community to come try to solve for them or with them. And so one of the challenges was from the animal care services, they needed a way to bring in potential adopters or notify potential adopters, some way to connect with more adopters in the city to get their pets out of the shelters and into better fitting homes for them. We, we heard about the challenge and Laura and I kind of looked at each other and we were like, we could do this. Like we could definitely scale this down, use what we learned in Code Up and try to build um, some type of model or MVP based off of this challenge. I have some experience in animal shelters. I've worked with San Antonio Humane Society. I worked there for about four years, right before CODA. And so it was really kind of like a passion, more of a passion project as well for Laura and I. So that was kind of where the idea formed and, and how it came about. We were really amazed that this was an opportunity to develop this concept. We had no idea there would be an animal based concern or need to modernize the processes of animal care services. But when we found out about this, we said to ourselves, we can do this. And through the support of Geekdom and CodeUp and City of San Antonio, we were able to be mentored and given the skill set to develop our company 
and we have developed a pet profiler that will help City of San Antonio residents connect with the animal care services pets in a modernized way from the convenience of their own home. People are able to adopt animals and, through shelters and we are excited to be a part of the San Antonio community and blossom this company through Geekdom. The last 12 months of the program has been amazing. Some of like the really, really awesome things that we got access to within the incubator program were the network of mentors that Geekdom has. We got help in almost every area of building a business that we could, which was awesome. So from marketing or accounting or, you know, application development or project management, we had a mentor and someone we could go to to ask questions, to ask advice, to get feedback on our processes. Because for Laura and I, we were both completely new to building a business or being an entrepreneur. So it was really nice to have that network of people that we knew exactly who to go to, to who to ask questions. And if a new area came up where we weren't really sure what we should do, just going to our program manager, Leslie, within like a day or two, she'd be like, oh, I have someone for you. Like, let me connect you. That was kind of one of the bigger highlights of the program, I think, that provided Laura and I the most value during the 12 months that we've been in the program. Hi, my name is Emma Dijon, and Potify is the number one pet adoption platform in San Antonio that helps people find the right pets and shelters find the right people. One of the biggest problems in the rescue shelter industry is the adoption process. From one side, pet adopters sometimes aren't educated enough in the process to confidently make mindful decisions based on their lifestyle and their needs. Oftentimes, an adopter will feel overwhelmed in the cumbersome process of paperwork, scouring multiple shelter websites to search for available pets, driving across town to hopefully meet the pet of their dreams only to find out that it might not have been the best match, and worst of all, feeling really unprepared when they bring home that pet for the first time. The current state of the adoption process also creates problems on the shelter side as well. The business of running a rescue shelter has so many different facets, from intake to animal care to staff and volunteer management, all the way up to that adoption process. This is a tedious and complex job for any director, staff member, or employee to try to manage. The City of San Antonio's Animal Care Services took in over 30,000 animals in just one year. That breaks down to about 577 animals a week and about 82 animals per day. Imagine staff trying to intake 82 animals a day, picking them up, screening them, inputting that data, finding them a kennel, feeding them, possibly for multiple days, introducing them to adopters, and what if the shelter is caring for an animal that has special needs? How do they easily identify an adopter who's prepared to take care of that animal? I'd like to share a story about the adoption process from the point of view of a potential adopter. A few years ago, this person wanted to adopt a kitten, so they traveled down to their local shelter. After meeting Maya the kitten, they were informed in order to adopt the cat, they needed to participate in a bonding period and then fill out that application. After the bonding period and filling out the application, they were told to wait 24 hours and then to return to the shelter the next day to pick up Maya. They were really excited and the next day arrived not a minute late of that waiting period to take Maya home. When they returned, however, they were told they no longer could adopt Maya due to an upper respiratory infection that they had seen develop overnight. They were devastated, angry, and really frustrated that they were put through a bonding period that left them feeling connected to Maya forever, only to be told that they couldn't adopt her. They were persistent with the shelter and were released the kitten after signing a consent form saying that they would take her to the vet within 48 hours to treat her for her aspirate infection. This is an example of a pretty traumatic customer experience using that typical adoption process that we see so many shelters using. With the services Potify, can provide, a story like this wouldn't have evolved. The potential adopter is just as important to us as that pet that they're adopting. We want to be an ancillary resource to animal shelters because we realize that the shelter's number one focus is and should be the animal that they're caring for. With Potify, the pet adoption process is simplified for everybody involved. Pet adopters can engage in interactive profiles to help them indirectly answer some pet adoption questions and help them identify ideal qualities of a pet while educating them on pet ownership. Many traditional form applications can seem really overwhelming to potential adopters, but through a simplified approach to obtain the necessary information that the shelter needs, we believe this will attract potential adopters and they won't feel so bombarded and experience curveballs through the process. After that initial step, 
A pet adopter profile is created from the quiz questions that they answered and generates that pet adoption application, which gives the shelters the information that they need to begin finding the ideal pet match for that adopter. These questions explore many different facets of the potential adopter's lifestyle and will inform the shelter such information as their ability to care for an animal with potential special needs, as we saw in Maya's case. This is just the tip of the iceberg for what we're able to accomplish at Podify. And as COVID has taught us, creating an interactive user experience for a virtual pet adoption is essential if you want a solution that will be sustainable during this time. Podify works directly with animal shelters to formulate adoption screening questions while asking questions about the pet adopter's lifestyle, budget, current pet family, and willingness to care for pets with special needs. Shelters can confidently and quickly place pets in homes using our 21st century technology that save time and resources so they can focus on caring for their pets and the other assets of shelter management. After the adoption is complete, that pet's information is added to the adopter's profile, creating a CRM of pet adopters that all shelters using Podify can have access to to see an adopter's history and information to expedite future adoption, whether or not they've adopted from that shelter facility before. With Podify, pet adopters are educated and prepared for the adoption process and can confidently find and adopt their perfect pet in one place. After taking the initial pet profiler quiz, adopters have access to training videos, dog breed educational videos, shelter pet behavior videos, and more to help them gain the knowledge that they need to feel confident in bringing home their pet. Shelters will pay a recurring fee, either monthly or annually, and that will be determined at the time of customer setup with Podify. During the time as well, shelters can select options and feature packages they will wish to have access to during their service. For example, they'll have access to the base product, the pet adopter profile quiz, as well as that data and reporting, but they could potentially choose to add on the adoption screening data, the custom adoption application, or the adoption appointment scheduler. The base product price will be determined by shelter size as well, meaning Podify can remain affordable for small local shelters. In the future, pet adopters who complete that pre-screening and adoption application through Podify have the option to pay on the Podify site, giving Podify a small percentage fee and the rest going to the shelter, of course. Podify has a unique opportunity here to also create a donation page through that checkout process for the shelter and the pet adopter as well. So what is the market opportunity here? According to IBIS, the market size measured in revenue for the animal rescue industry is about 3.1 billion and has seen about an 8.5% growth per year for the last five years. There are about 21 small and large rescue shelters here in San Antonio that Podify has reached out to both from survey feedback and new customer business contacts. Animal Care Services reported about 6,000 adoptions in 2020, so just one shelter partner could potentially net Podify revenue just through that base product. The biggest competitors in the market currently are Chameleon and PetPoint. These are both large companies who currently answer to larger parent companies. Thus, for them, any kind of innovation or change to their technology is a longer and more difficult process and can't be delivered fast enough for their customers. Podify, on the other hand, due to our innovative technology, our application will streamline customizing and personalizing features to fit the needs of each shelter individually with seamless and applicable development. We plan to accomplish the following to get us to the next level and ready for beta testing. We project our pilot to be ready for beta testing in mid to late 2021, leading into the beta testing of Podify in 2022. And by 2024, our big goal is to have at least three large shelter partners in the San Antonio area. Again, my name is Emma, and I have a background in rescue shelter management. I met Laura Prochaska, my co-founder, while attending CODEP, a web development bootcamp here in San Antonio. And that's where the foundation of Podify and the concept of the idea begun. Laura and I are really excited about the next steps for Podify, and we ask that you follow us along for our journey. Thank you. Awesome job, Podify. Next up, we have Solovago, and they're working to solve the problem of helping women in particular, but anyone who's traveling alone feel safe on their journey. And this is really important to our city, cities everywhere, individuals everywhere, as we know what it feels like when you're going somewhere for the first time that's unfamiliar, or maybe that you have to go somewhere a lot alone, and you just wanna let everyone around you know that matters to you, that you're okay, that you're safe, or when you're not safe, um, and how to get the help you need if you aren't feeling safe. So Solovago, take it away. I'm 
Emily Rodriguez. I'm the product director for Solivago, and we are a mobile safety application that is helping build a safer San Antonio. Back in 2018, myself and my two teammates, Jennifer Walker and Wayne Siddell, were all attending Code Up. One day, Jen and I were having lunch, and we were having a conversation about this unfortunate shared experience that women have a lot where, you know, they find themselves walking alone and feel uncomfortable or wish they knew an area of town better. Solivago comes from the word solivagus, which is Latin for wandering alone. And I just kind of did some research on some different words for traveling or wandering and came across that one. And so kind of change it up to be Solivago, like go with Solivago. <laughs> so San Antonio is a city that's growing and changing really quickly. And you know, that's really exciting to be a part of, but it can also create some uncertainty if you're exploring maybe a new area of town or one that previously you wouldn't have been comfortable exploring. We see a lot of growth and change here really quickly. And so we are providing our users with the tools that they need to safely navigate their city by seeing how other users have felt in areas of town. Our application is unique because we're crowdsourcing safety data from our users, creating sort of a safety network across San Antonio um, by gathering that user feedback. And that's something that doesn't exist out there right now. You know, you can, you can look at crime data, you can look at certain statistics like that, but as far as how people, you know, that fit, you know, similar demographics as you and how they would feel in certain areas, there's nothing that really exists to find that information. And so that's what we're gathering and building with Solovago. You know, we started building this application specifically with women in mind, but I really think that anyone can benefit from it. Everybody is going to have a different feeling of what safety means to them. You know, I, I walk down a street and I will feel different than you walking down a street. You know, there are different things that attribute to that feeling of safety. And so by users using Solivago and providing that feedback based on who they are is going to be helpful for other people that identify in that same way. I was drawn to code up because I love to solve problems. And what I have found learning to code in over the past couple of years in my own personal career is that I have a passion for taking business problems and translating those into technical solutions. My teammate Jen actually reached out to Craig Hopkins from the city of San Antonio. Uh, she had heard that he was looking for some smart city solutions that people were working on. And so she reached out to him and the two of us actually went and met with Craig and pitched what we had started building. And it was something that he was excited about. Over time, the city and Geekdom came together and formed this incubator. And so we were lucky enough to be one of those teams that they already had in mind to be a part of it. So we have continued to work with each other and with Geekdom since 2018, um, up until the start of the incubator last year. I would say the exposure to people that we can utilize as mentors over the past year and just the number of workshops that we've gotten to experience um, have been incredible because all of us coming into this have never built a business before. And so we definitely needed uh, to gain some knowledge and needed some help on that. And we've had a lot thrown at us that's been really helpful this past year. Hi, I'm Emily Rodriguez, co-founder and product director of Solivago. At Solivago, we not only help keep our users safe, but our users help us to build a safer San Antonio. A few years back, I was leaving a store just about a mile away from my home, and a man outside began to catcall and try to get me to come over to his vehicle. I ignored him, got into my own car, and began to drive home. It was about halfway there that I realized he was pulled up next to me, trying to get my attention with some rude gestures. I again ignored him and just sped up a little. He then proceeded to follow me. There was still some part of me that thought maybe I was overreacting and he would go his own way at any moment, but every turn I made, he followed. I knew my husband was home at the time, so I called him to meet me outside. I know in hindsight that I should not have led this person to my house, but in the moment I panicked. I felt better knowing that my husband knew exactly where I was and how I was feeling. As soon as my pursuer saw my husband in our driveway, he sped off. I was shaken. I was upset, and I felt violated. In the days that followed, I shared this story with uh, my close girlfriends and almost always got the same response. Oh yeah, I've had something like that happen to me as well. 
Story after story of being followed to their car, being openly harassed while walking alone, or worse. 50% of women say that they often feel unsafe walking alone at night. I really want to emphasize the word feel there. There are a lot of factors that go into what makes you feel unsafe and fuel that fear that you could find yourself in a bad situation. It could be unfamiliarity with the area, bad lighting, not a lot of people around, or a friend or family member has just warned you against that area in the past. With the Solavago mobile app, we are equipping our users with the tools they need to make informed decisions about the areas they visit by displaying feedback and points of concern from other Solavago users. Keeping your closest contacts updated on your current location is just a click away with Solavago, whether this is to raise an alarm or just to let them know that you've arrived safely. Let's say Jennifer has just been walking home. After a night in the town, Jen wants to let me know that she's made it safely home. She would just click our safe button and I and any other contacts she had set up would receive a text message from Solavago. This message contains a clickable link to her location. Users are also able to provide feedback on their location. Their location is captured when they hit the add feedback button from the map view. Users can provide a rating on a scale of zero to 100, as well as the description of this rating. These added points will be available to other users based on their personal settings, and also user can see their points of feedback from their profile page. Each click of our alert or feedback buttons is gathering valuable data points that help create a narrative about how we travel through our city. Utilizing the Solavago dashboard, we can display these points, uh, adjusting the date and time range to visualize when and where our users are feeling unsafe. We plan on offering a freemium model to our mobile users with the basic functionality being free to all. But for a monthly premium, they'll be able to add unlimited contacts, create a hierarchy of how and when they'd like their contacts notified, as well as further customization of the map view and messages that their contacts receive. A monthly subscription fee to access our dashboard is another key source of revenue for us. Dashboard access and reporting would offer insights for the end user's specified areas. We anticipate this being valuable for the city of San Antonio and other municipalities, universities, and possibly high schools, as well as our mobile users. We see a lot of opportunity in working with local businesses to advertise within the application as well. We hope to partner with certain locations as safe spaces for our users. With increasing security concerns, especially for women and children, the market for smart personal safety applications and devices is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 13% over the next three years. North America has the largest market share as awareness of personal safety and security among its users grows. Based on market research, surveys and focus groups, we consider our target user to be women between the ages of 26 and 35. There are 1.5 million residents of San Antonio alone, uh, with women making up a little over 50% of that population. 240,000 women fit into our target market. With just 10% of that market engaging with the app as premium users, we would create a revenue of $71,000 a month. I want to introduce the other co-founders of Solavago, Wayne Siddell and Jennifer Walker. The three of us met while attending Code Up in 2018. A conversation over lunch between Jen and I and those unfortunate shared experiences that a lot of women have quickly turned into our idea for our final capstone project. We both quickly identified Wayne as who we wanted to work with and our team was complete. We all feel incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be a part of the Geekdom Incubator's first year and have learned an immense amount. Thank you again from all of us at Solavago and we hope that you will follow us on one of our social media platforms for updates. Thanks, Solavago. And next we have Polis. Polis is working on solving the problem of helping our residents and tourists navigate the Riverwalk. If you've ever been downtown to the Riverwalk in San Antonio, you know what a challenge that can be. Even if you've lived here your whole life, which I have, I couldn't tell you when I'm standing in the middle of the Riverwalk how to get to the riverboats, how to get to the restaurant you just asked me to. Signage only goes so far, especially on a subterranean level when Google Maps isn't there to help you. So Polis is working to solve this issue and they've been working with the Riverwalk um, and the Office of Historic Preservation, all sorts of people at our city to um, work on their product and get it out to the public. We're excited to hear from them and see all the work that they've done. Take it away, Polis.
So my name is Matthew Monroe. I'm the Business Development Director for Polis. And Polis means city in Greek. And our hope is to make the city of San Antonio a more reliable place to navigate. We use Bluetooth Low Energy Beacons to create a network at the subterranean level for the Riverwalk that allows people to interact with their surroundings and navigate to the places that they want to go to. Hi, my name is Colby Doyle. I am the Marketing and Web Developer for Polis. And Polis is a walking map navigation app uh, aimed to improve the navigation of downtown, specifically on the Riverwalk. So we started Polis because back in 2018, the city of San Antonio and a member of Deacon staff, Joyce Dooley, came to our entrepreneurship class at Trinity and pitched these challenges. These challenges were for the CivTech SA program, and one of the challenges highlighted the fact that tourists and residents struggle to navigate the Riverwalk. Colby and I were in this class together and instantly we started ideating once we heard the problem. We decided from there to continue working on the problem outside of our entrepreneurship class and here we are today. So the problem that we're solving is a multifold problem. It's not only just navigation for tourists and residents on the Riverwalk, but also it, it, it hinders employee resources. Employees on the Riverwalk are constantly burdened with having to assist tourists with guidance of where they want to go and residents of where they want to go. Likewise, businesses miss out on tons of opportunity for, for missed revenue as people are unable to find their locations. And then of course there's hidden gems in the community that are frequently missed because people just don't know about them. My vision for the company is just being able to have a reliable walking map navigation for people to get to from point A to point B, be the walking map app for people to use, whether it's on the subterranean level at the Riverwalk or indoors navigations, just to get to find your seat and you know have that reliable navigation where Wi-Fi or a lack of connectivity is the main problem. Other mapping solutions, whether it's Google Maps or Apple Maps, rely on GPS services to navigate. And that means you're having to ping to a satellite and then ping back down to your phone. And it's just really a, a slow process when there's a lot of buildings around or when you're at that subterranean level. So providing this network with the beacons really does increase the accuracy, allowing people to just navigate to where they want to get to without having the hassle of a spinning icon on their screen or they're jumping across the street going back and forth. They take a left turn and it thinks they're going right. We kind of alleviate those pain points in the navigation solution. As we all know, 2020 has kind of been an eventful year for multiple reasons. Creating a business through this whole pandemic has, you know, had many challenges, especially since our application is based solely on human interaction and, and since the pandemic that's kind of been you know put on the back burner. With our passion for this, uh, we've been going through this for a couple years now or about three years now, uh, just driving and trying to build a product and build a company that'll help people. But our goal was not to just find revenue, find money and create a billion dollar business. Our goal is to create a business that makes an impact on the community that we live in. Hi, we are the Polis Network and we are the walking map app for people. Looking at the problem currently faced today, it's a twofold problem. Both tourists and residents struggle to navigate the Riverwalk and businesses miss out on a lot of opportunities. The Riverwalk is multi-level, meaning traditional forms of connectivity and mapping solutions don't function. There's just not great service at the subterranean level. Likewise, employee resources are constantly burdened by navigation questions and hidden communities are frequently missed. For residents, about 80% of them use their memory to navigate the Riverwalk. This means that when they go to the Riverwalk, they go to the same places. When their family comes into town, they bring them to the same places. They're missing out on all the amazing parts of the Riverwalk that they just don't know. For tourists, it's a little bit different. They come into their hotel downtown and they're given a paper map. In the digital age, they're required to use a paper map to navigate the Riverwalk. This is just not okay. And then a great example is the family. We met this family about a couple months ago when we were on the Riverwalk for an event, and they asked where the riverboats were. We directed them towards where we thought they were, but we really didn't know. We found this family 20 minutes later on the opposite side of the Riverwalk, a quarter mile down, not on the riverboats. And when we asked them what happened, they said they couldn't find them. Looking at our solution, we're bridging the gap between people, businesses, and cities through improved navigation. First of all, you don't have to know somebody. Both tourists and residents alike can accurately locate local businesses that would have otherwise been missed. 
the river walk becomes easily accessible. You're able to find the entrances, the exits, and everywhere where you want to go. And all of this can be done in one app. The Polis app uses Bluetooth low energy beacons to provide this network of navigation at the subterranean level. The app provides an engagement platform that makes the city your playground. Tourists and residents are able to discover new places on the river walk, find these businesses that they would have otherwise missed, they can get geo-specific push notifications. These notifications are tailored to their needs and their wants and drive revenue for the businesses on the Riverwalk. Likewise, tourists and residents will receive rewards the more they interact with their surroundings. Looking at our solution, we have our events tab where tourists and residents can easily search for events find a description of the event, see how many attendees are currently at the event, and get directions to the event. When they go to the event, they'll receive points that show up on a leaderboard. This not only drives community engagement and makes it a fun, playful environment, but they can redeem these points for rewards and discounts at local businesses and attractions. On the back end for businesses, it's really easy to set up. They just have to type in a description of what they want the beacon to say. The beacon will push out the notification for all those passing by, driving revenue into the businesses and enhancing the experience for the, the tourists and residents. Looking at our competitive analysis, the Polis app offers a wide range of features that our competitors just do not. For instance, Google Maps and Apple Maps don't use Bluetooth beacons, they don't have in-app in ads, and they don't have event information. Only Apple Maps is able to provide indoor navigation, and that's only in select locations with the service that is reliable. Then we have Waze. Waze uses Bluetooth beacons in tunnels in order to provide navigation. However, this is only for driving. They do not offer a walking solution. Pulse is able to offer all of these features in one app. Then we have our revenue model. We have four different revenue streams, starting with development. This allows our customers to white label an app that uses Polis's core features. For instance, if you're a stadium or an amusement park, you're able to create a navigation network in your location that is tailored towards your needs. Then we have installation. This is a one-time fee that covers our cost for the beacons and provides a low-cost solution for navigation. For data analytics, it's a subscription-based MRR that allows businesses to get insights on consumer habits and people walking by their door. Then we have advertisements. This is usage-based revenue that allows businesses to promote directly to people outside their door. Looking at our market opportunity, there's a lot of potential. For potential users, there's about 2.5 million residential visits a year. We believe we can capture about 200,000 of those residents as users on the Polis app. Furthermore, there's about 9.3 million non-residential visitors a year. Of those 9.3, we believe we can capture 3.3 million based off of both demographic data and the likelihood of these people downloading a mobile application within any given month. As far as potential revenue goes, there's a lot. We, break, we broke it up between restaurants, bars, entertainment, and hotels, where we think we can generate the most revenue. This comes out to about $1.2 million a year, and this is only in the downtown area. Meeting the team. First of all, we start with Colby Doyle. He's our marketing director and does web development. He currently works for Lead Hub as a PPC specialist and has done a great job on our social medias. We have Matt Monroe, that is myself. I do business development and I currently work for a data analytics and ingestion company here in downtown San Antonio. Then we have Andre Gomes, who's our lead engineer. He has over 10 years of experience in software development and currently works as a lead engineer for Go Smart Solar. Thank you so much. And if you want to learn more, please visit polis.network. Thank you so much to everyone who was a part of this incubator program. I'm looking at you, mentors who took the time to meet with these teams and guide them through different processes and, and their ideas. I'm looking at you, all of you who helped um, run workshops or different events for these teams as well that were really hands-on, dug really deep into their problems and their solutions and everything that they've been working on this year. Um, I also want to thank our community for just being supportive of these teams, especially during COVID-19. These teams definitely had to deal with a lot of pivoting, a lot of changing. Um, and to that, I want to thank the teams. You guys have been amazing to work with. We're so proud of you here at Geekdom. Thank you for giving us a year of your time and commitment so that we can help you shape your company and take it to the next level. 
One last thing I need to say is a huge thank you to the City of San Antonio's Innovation Department, Craig Hopkins, and the Economic Development Department for helping make this program a reality. Uh, the help that you've been able to offer to these teams as they formulated their businesses has been essential, and I owe you a huge thanks. So thank you all for the help that you've done uh, and looking forward to what this next year brings.